you had just Hey, Amber, can you take that thing off our faces? <laughs> Thank you. I know, right? <laughs> and then let's stop feeding the ducks. Can you turn that music off? Thank you. Amazing. I mean, I do like feeding the ducks. Did y'all know that music is called feeding the ducks, which seems appropriate for Patty with your situation with the chickens and the ducks. <laughs> uh, so I think we're on. Are we good? So I'm so happy that y'all are here today. And I don't know how many of you are here because I can't see you. And we haven't created the space where we can participate actively. But this is like the beginning of a journey. And so it's only fitting that I'm with Patty Dobrovolsky, who has been a sage and, um, yeah, a wise woman and a person that has um, shepherded me through many other creative processes. But I'm really delighted. And Sahar, um, shout out to you, doodler extraordinaire. And so I want to just like quickly get in. We have an hour together, which is amazing. And because I know that you're what? Definitely. I know it's exciting. And I know that y'all's attention is um, one of the most sought after uh, elements in today's world. So I promise we will not squander it. So I want to just set y'all up for how we're going to go through this experience. What we're first going to do is I'm going to do a little tiny bit of um, framing and storytelling around this opening show. This is essentially the launch of a pilot program that um, in my fantasy world, it leads to a community and um, a movement and um, a, the opening up into a literacy and a discipline that actually has an impact on um, society. I mean, I, I'm not messianic, I swear. But what are we doing here today and why are y'all here? So let's just get straight to that question. OK, so how does that look? Does that look good? So Patty is graphically recording, FYI. So for those of you who don't know what graphic recording is, she's going to live scribe what I'm saying so that we have an archive and a record. Yeah. Patty's one of the matriarchs of graphic recording, by the way. Um, so we're going to get into her um, experience, too. So why we wanted to launch this show, it's called the Collaborative Intelligence Show. And why we wanted to launch it is because we are democratizing a discipline that we call collaboration design. And... Um, that is a lot to unpack. And so we're going to do that over the course of the journey. But ultimately, when I say we, I mean me and Mural. So I have come on board as the innovator in residence at Mural. And they are creating this discipline and this rubric and this taxonomy called collaboration design. And it actually is relevant to you, um, all of you, anyone who is working with other human beings. This is a significant um, discipline. And if you unpack it, it just has two major rivers that run through it. One is guided methods and the other one is relational intelligence. And the question is, why would we want you guys to learn collaboration design? Like, why is it interesting? And we were taking stock of 
where we are in history, what we have as a tool and a platform, uh, who we have, what kind of people that we have available to us, and what is the biggest problem that we could solve and the biggest offering that we could make. And at the end of the day, it came down to connection. And it came down to the fact that when you look across the board at how human beings are struggling and how we are um, trying to attend to what we're facing, we're disconnected from each other. We're disconnected from ourselves. We're disconnected from um, the planet and we're disconnected from that which is sacred. And those, that's problematic. That's a problem. And so we wanted to take this on as a challenge to figure out, could we actually teach a discipline that um, augments people's problem solving and also attends to the human problem of being connected to each other so that we feel better, right? It's a big why. And weirdly, my career has led me to this making sense for me. And there's a lot of people at Mural that for whom this journey is important. And so just a shout out to Steven Anderson and Mike Roy um, and Jim Callback and Mark Tippin, people for whom, and Chris Pacioni and Bill Lucas and Elena. There's people that are coming in that have these same disciplines and these rubrics. And I know that there's some of you who know me and some of you who don't, but I, um, I'm really a delight, you know what I'm saying, like once you get to know me, but um, although my husband would argue with that, but my, <laughs> I guess it depends on how well you know me, because like if you know me, ultimately I'm super irritating, but um, my career has created a possibility of me using these methodologies and Patty as well, and why they're so potent is because they give you an opportunity to sort of become more intimate with reality and to inquire into the nature of that and how to attend to it and meet it in ways that are really useful. So we're going to unpack, we're going to deploy these tools on this show to figure out how to support you and your work and wherever your work is and with whoever your team is. And you don't have to be special. You don't have to be a trained facilitator. You don't have to be a master collaboration designer. In fact, the beginner's mind is super useful. So, but these are the tools and techniques that we're gonna use to attend to relational intelligence and to um, guided methods. So I am this person. And in this role, I have the great fortune of working with wonderful people who are also going to be part of this journey. And some of them are going to be my co-hosts, okay? Because thankfully, I have multiple co-hosts. I have Jim Callback, Mark Tippin, Haley. Patty's probably going to be here a lot if I don't, like, frighten her away. <laughs> um, and the why around that. So here's another why. There's a lot of whys to pursue collaboration design. Another are you showing a slide deck? Yeah, can you see it? Nope. So sure. yeah, make sure you're sharing. Okay. Maybe it disconnected. Why? <laughs> so can y'all see that? Yes. It's bad. So here's another why. Um, okay. Ready? Houston, we got problems. Right? <laughs> um, I have a chipped tooth, you know, like, can y'all see that? I chip my chip. Like that's not a, it's a simple problem. It's a solvable, simple problem, but there are other problems that we have to attend to. And I know there's a lot on this slide visual, but the basic categories of problems are complicated, complex, and chaotic, right? And we have, we share these problems. We are in this together and complicated would be something like producing this event. It was complicated, but it was doable. And there was an obvious path. Complex problems are difficult to define and they're unpredictable. And so an example of that would be like attending to the mental health crisis in teens. That's a complex problem. And then a chaotic problem is, is what's unfolding in Ukraine. Or um, do you guys remember when they rescued the Chilean miners, the 33 Chilean miners that were underground? That was a chaotic problem. And we have these problems and we're facing them. And for me, um, I don't know about you, but I get mobilized when I find a challenge and, but I need to have tools. And I want to say this, this is like, maybe feels a little doomsday-ish, but I don't think it is. So just take in this quote. All right. This is from Joanna Macy. She's not, not, showing, not showing. Okay, good. Thanks for checking. Um, I guess I keep sharing it and then it goes away. Can y'all see this now? Yeah. Interesting. It's like it kicks me out. It got freaked out by the problem conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Too many problems, lady. I'm going to make one for you. Um, 
This is a quote from Joanna Macy. She's 93 years old now. And she's Whoa. an activist. Yes. And she's still an activist. And she is a, a scholar of general systems theory. And I think all of us are feeling this. And I, I'll read it out loud for those of you who can't see it. I don't know if we're here to witness the end of the world or to save it. But we're here and we're here together. And so... I think we all know this on some level and we're all experiencing it on some level. And so the collective intelligence is what we are inviting you to participate in. And so we need tools, right? And you guys, people who know me know I love methods and tools and strategies and I love visual thinking. So here's two really potent tools for solving problems, okay? One is visual thinking and I'm gonna define that in a second. And uh, Patty, always let me know if the slides drop because these are just like magic slides. So uh, yeah, that slide dropped. So put it in there. Okay, thanks. Put it in again. Yeah, there you go. What's up? Oh, how crazy. So visual thinking and collaboration design, which is that discipline I was talking about. And neither one of these requires special superpowers. They are just muscles that you exercise and you practice with. Okay. Here's the... Um, definition of visual thinking. This is my definition. It's not the only one, but it's the exploration of information. Change the slide. Change it? Yeah, it's not up there. Unless it's on the slide. Is it? Do you have it on? Hmm. Go back two slides. Yeah, really? Oh, maybe there's a delay. Oh, there it is. Visual thinking. Got it. Yeah, I'll just be patient. So the exploration of information, I might leave it out of presentation mode. And also you guys, because it's a collaborative intelligence show, any tips and tricks you want to throw down in the comments, <laughs> they're welcome. So the visual thinking is one of the allies and the other one is collaboration design. And visual thinking is the exploration of information using visual language and visual structures so that we can mobilize some of our capacities for thinking. So I want to say something about that. These are um, from Harvard uh, School of Education, from um, an uh, initiative called Project Zero. And what they did was they determined, they studied the, what they call metacognitive moves that any brain can make, most brains can make, and unpack them. And so they're called thinking moves or thinking routines. And why visual thinking is so potent and why I've always been in love with it as soon as I found it, which was I was late to the game in terms of being an adult learner, and is because they changed my life. Visual thinking changed my life and facilitation changed my life. And it made it possible for me to not only have a way of externalizing information that I was holding in my mind, but didn't know how to extricate and see, but it also em empowered what I could do with my cognitive processes. And so, of course, who doesn't want to lean into something that makes, gives you wings and makes things more possible for you that otherwise are difficult? So that's why I got really passionate about it and started teaching it. And then the second tool is collaboration design, the second discipline. And I also want to emphasize something because where I'm going with this piece is around the internal work required to be an exceptional collaborator. So my show in particular emphasizes inner collaboration and the remaining shows probably emphasize outer, but there's a, a middle path there. So collaboration design. So the discipline that we're teaching using mural and using the community that we're gonna build around this, cause there's visual practitioners all over the world that are collaboration designers and they're outstanding and exquisite and doing very powerful work. Ole Kvist is one of them too. Um, so it involves what I call an interior climate of cooperation and mutual success, which establishes a flow between people and within people, and it makes the outcomes better, which means that um, you're for someone. So when you're in a state of deep collaboration, you are not only about yourself. You're not just an individual unit sort of vying for the prize or climbing the ladder. You're actually attentive to and caring of the success of the other people with you because you know that together you can do more and that it is isolating when you are on your own, right? So you're connected, which is why it actually relates to solving the problem of connection because when you're in a collective body, you can attend to challenges much more skillfully and much more fluidly and you feel good because you're part of something bigger than yourself, right? So collaboration sounds complicated and I 
and I know that the people I'm working with have been examining it and we're looking for a rubric. Um, and, but I've kind of distilled it to these three that I've noticed are really powerful and y'all are all capable of them and you're all probably doing them. And so the, the opportunity here is to just get more skillful about it and to test it with each other and trust each other enough to learn together and to make missteps together. And there's only three things that I think are the kind of ennobling factors for um, collaboration. Boom, right? Curiosity. Go we, on, next slide. You want me to put on the next slide? Oh, is that what, do you still want it on this one? Useful thinking? No. Yeah, next slide then. There you go. I think there was just a delay. Yeah. Curiosity. Got it. Bam. I wonder what you're going to make that look like. Mm -hmm. um, I can't wait to see. You can't use a light bulb. I'm going to remove that option and then see. Oh. What <laughs> um, so curiosity. man. So people underestimate the power of this state of mind. Right. So if you perceive that you have a fixed idea of reality that is consistent and true across space and time, that is the opposite of curiosity, okay? That is having a, a um, holding something tightly and not allowing information to change that knowing. So when I've seen people that are skillful at collaboration, they return consistently to a state of deep curiosity, and that is a practice, okay? But you can do it. And turn-taking, so we make room for other people. So when you see a group of people working together and there's a couple of people dominating, Ultimately, what happens is the collective intelligence decreases. So you have to make space. We have to make space for other people that don't necessarily articulate the way we do or speak the same language or have the they have neurodiversity kicking in or um, are quiet, just straight up quiet people. We need the um, entirety of those perspectives in order to actually amplify what's possible. So just turn taking and you can track that in a conversation with someone. Right. You can track it in a meeting. You can feel it in a meeting when it's not there. And finally, the yes brain. This is actually based on interpersonal neurobiology and Move your, forward your slides again. OK. I'm going to hold I'm going to wait five seconds because I feel like every time I do it, it just it needs me to. Before. Now we're still on curiosity. Oh, okay. okay. There you go. Now we're there. It's so bizarre. As soon as I push the button, it's like, okay. Um, is it there? Yep. Weird. Um, yes, brains. Can you see the word yes, brain? Yes, ma'am. We can. Yes, brain. Um, so yes, brain, you guys. Essential for collaboration and collaboration design. What does it mean in a nutshell? I am not the representative of interpersonal neurobiology, but we will have those people on the show. Yes brain means in a nutshell, there's blue zone, red zone, and green zone. You want people you're working with on a team that are solving a problem in the green zone. The blue zone is faint or freeze. The red zone is fight or flight. So you have four Fs that happen to the nervous system when we are not in a safe space and we cannot actually get into a fluidity. So when you're working with teams, you can start tracking if you are yourself in a red or blue zone, meaning you're hyper aroused or you're hypo aroused and try to get back into a regulated state or um, notice if you're having that effect on other people because it will ultimately impact the outcome. And so these are actually two other concepts that we'll talk about later that are directly related to collaboration. But what happens when you have these three elements, curiosity, turn-taking, and the yes brain, is you get this fluidity. You get these spaces in between us, these relational spaces in between us that make um, information and knowledge flow. They make connection happen. They make um, potential unlock and they make innovations and adaptations imminently more possible. And that's so exciting because it feels so good to do that. Like when Patty and I are going to do a game in a second called Change Genie, and we're going to be doing this flow. And if we break the flow, we'll just track it. It's not a big deal if we do that. We're not illuminated beings all the time. Like we have to make mistakes. So these are practices. These are not um, mandates that you... Um, should judge yourself for. But I will say how to move into a liquid network, how to move into a generative social space. There are actually ways. All right. Can you see that? No, I don't see it yet. 
Click it's, that button again. Okay. Because this one's like, this one's like going. There into you go. Effective ways to open the channel. Yeah. All right. You see it? Yes. Right? And so we're all capable of these things. That's what's so nice is that we just, they're here. They're native to us. We just need to soften some of the barriers to them. And when you do that, it moves people into a fluid state where they can start to tango. Okay. So here's where it goes. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. This is how you close the channel. Can you see that? Not yet, but that's because I had to get these last two allow and appreciate. Now hit the slide again. Okay. No, nope, not that? yet. Not yet. Okay. There we go now. It's deeply interesting why that happens. Do you all see this? The effective ways to close the channel. Now, I want to say something to Antonio because I'm confident that you're here watching. So we all do this stuff, Antonio. Antonio has this tendency to give himself a hard time for not being like a flawless human being. And um, we all do this. I assure you that yesterday I uh, out-argued my husband. I assure you that I did that. I mean, I didn't win or anything, but I attempted to out-argue him. Um, and I'm certain that I denied some very important piece of information for him. <laughs> so like, it's not about saying, oh, I am, I'm Yoda or I'm Grogu. And I'm just like humming with joy all the time. It's about saying, wow, notice, notice what's happening. What am I doing? Cause I'm shutting, I might be shutting down the person that I'm attempting to collaborate with. Right. So if you go back to ways to open the channel and I want those. To go turn that slide one more time. Okay. There you go. It's yeah. these, these practices. Listen, stay curious, go slow. I should probably do that right now. Wonder, allow, and appreciate. It is astonishing what happens to the relationship in between when people extend this gift to other human beings. Now, um, is it easy? No, I'm not saying it's easy, but I'm saying we can do it and we're going to practice it on this show. That's what's so awesome about this journey. So great collaboration is an inside job. This is my personal point of view. One more slide. Mm -hmm. Okay. There we go. Great. Thank you so much for tracking, Patty. Um, so great collaboration is an inside job. And what I mean by that is that it starts within and then it builds outward. Now you, you have guided methods. We have a lot of guided methods and we're actually going to talk a little bit about those just to get you excited about what we can do together. Um, but though, and those are effective. They're, they're intellectual and tactical and pragmatic and super effective and awesome. Um, and the people who deploy those methods are more effective when they can move into those states that I was describing earlier, listen, allow, wonder, and appreciate. And what gets in the way of that is actually internal content. It, yes, there's people that we find irritating. That's just being alive. But we, the way we meet that is up to us. That is, those are decisions that we can choose and practice choosing. So it is an inside job. And that's the other um, reason I'm excited to work together with whoever among you want to keep playing in this play space with us, because you will find profound liberation in the process of um, unpacking some of that, some of that, and in particular methods that I'm going to actually show y'all. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. <clears throat> yeah, thanks, Patty. <laughs> I can't respond other than in the chat. <laughs> no, I'm digging it. Um, so, so, and, and here's the other thing. People, we are so hard on ourselves. It is shocking. And I want to tell you all the four plagues of it. When people do internal work, the four things that terrorize us the most, okay? Um, I'm too much. I'm not enough. I'm unlovable. And I'm unworthy, okay? So th those are in the Western world. Those are typically the most highly probabilistic plagues that will come up when we try to do internal work. And this is why these three elements are absolutely critical. Curiosity, empathy, and compassion. So I'm never going to put any one of you who participate in an environment that is not safe for you or is uncomfortable. You never have to share something you don't want to share. 
Um, but I'm going to beat this drum over and over and over again, because when we fail, quote fail, we think that we somehow did something wrong and we're terrified of not living up to some expectation that was from our family of origin or from society or whatever. And often we're not a safe container for our own um, resilience around that. So these three qualities, we, we are going to start to imbue the practice of collaboration design with these three qualities. And I they're absolutely critical. And I also want to differentiate just for the nerds out there, the distinction between empathy and compassion. They're very different processes in the body. Empathy is mediated by the pain circuits in the brain, which means that you feel your pain. When someone's telling you a story, they are experiencing their pain and you're experiencing your version of, of your pain. So you're feeling yours while they're feeling theirs. It's mediated by the pain circuits. But compassion is actually mediated by the pleasure circuits, which means that you are still attending to someone, but you have a perspective and you're not getting caught in the emotional stream that they are ex experiencing. And you need both. When you are working with human beings, you need both. And when you're working with yourself, you need both. So, so you're going to be um, wherever the journey takes you and whichever places you're willing to participate we're always going to summon these native capacities that we have for ourselves and others. So it's actually going to be um, enjoyable and the vitality will be real. Okay. I have the spinning wheel of death. So I wanted to tell y'all that the, <laughs> I know, uh, I know. Can you see God, the, yeah. uh, are there, I see there's 24 comments. Is there anything in there that is interesting that I should attend to at the time? I think Amber has to read it because I can't see it, the comments. And can Amber do that? She should be able to unmute herself and read it. You might be the only person that can see. Here's something from Linda Baker. Comfort with mm -hmm. your sunny is managing these technical glitches is an example of collaboration starts with oneself. Man, no doubt. That is so Hello, good. Linda. Linda in the house. Okay. Hey, hey, I want to show you, Linda, something that. What are you showing? Where'd she go? Is she coming back? Are you there? You're frozen. So, Sunny, you're frozen for a second. All right, she's going to come back. Maybe she'll have to exit and come back in. We'll have to see. Maybe stop sharing your screen, see if that helps. And then there, she's coming back. She'll come back in in a second, which is a good time for everybody to look at what's happening up here. So I'm just capturing everything that she's talking about, the why, the guided methods and the discipline and the problems and how visual thinking and collaboration solves it. It's fantastic. And um, Amber's helping her put yourself off, off mute. You're still on mute there. And then we're having this, you know, great collaboration is inside job. So that was a big piece of it. Yeah. Give me a bunch of books. Oh, okay, good. And then here, up here, we just have curiosity and taking and, than the guest mindset. So I just did a quick recap. Okay, you're back. You're on I know, but screen. It's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's so crazy. And also we're gonna have to, it, will you unfreeze it whenever you have a chance over there? Okay, cool. Cause we have to play a game in Mural and it's called Change Genie. Thanks, Patty. Did you give them a rundown of the... I, did, I didn't talk about Change Genie yet, though. I was still just looking at really what you were talking about, these three native capacities of curiosity, empathy, and compassion. I think uh -huh. that's like the rocket ship that gets everybody off into space, into yes. really good collaboration. You that's know, beautiful. when we think about it, you have to really... Um, show up authentically, but you never will if it's not a trusting environment. And trust mm -hmm. requires people to dig deep and to mm -hmm. share from their heart. And sometimes mm -hmm. as a leader, you can set the tone in the room by how you show up mm -hmm. and do that. And every you do person, set the tone. Absolutely. Yeah, you set the tone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so, hey, check it out, Patty. Um, she got you getting some compliments. Patty's unflappable. Love it. And also, Mateo, thank you for the tip about rebooting tech like a person. I think Amber's up to that right now. And it's hilarious because my husband was like, do you have any backup plan for the computer breaking down? And I was like, that's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. 
we're so, uh, uh, wholly optimistic all the time. That's what it yeah, is. Yeah, right. Well, so do you, uh, oh, I was going to say, I'll show them the games we're going to play at the end. But Patty, I think you could set up Change Genie while sure, Amber sure. is. Okay, I'm going to go check right. on the other sitch. All right, good. So um, so we're going to play a game called Change Genie. And Change Genie is a oh. visual, um, kind of visual tarot. So um, I created it one day when I was sitting uh, just in my office. And I thought, wouldn't it be great if I could create a change game to play with my clients? And I would play it. Um, I was thinking in my mind, I think I'll just, you know, put out all the different uh, ways that we go through change, which there's a start to change, and then there's early on, there's halfway through, there's um, almost there, there's finish, and then there's looking back. Those mm -hmm. That's the process of change that everybody goes through. And then, mm -hmm. of course, we always encounter weather. So there's some weather cards. And then I thought, well, now I'm just going to draw a bunch of images, and I'm going to put words on them. And mm -hmm. there's some of them are like really out there. And I created the deck in an hour. I just did it. Did you? And I did it on like three by five cards, blank three by five cards. And then I took it in. I was working with a big client out of, you know, outside of or in Oregon. You can mm -hmm. think of who it is, athletic gear. And anyway, <laughs> so I went in there to work with them and they were doing a change initiative there. And I was trying, I was selling myself to the leader is really what was happening. I needed her to know that I would be really fun to work with. So I brought out this fake change genie deck, the first version, and I played <laughs> it with her after we had talked about what could happen if I came in and helped them and how I could be instrumental, what they really needed. Of course, I talk customer first, right? And then I go, hey, do you want to see how the change is going to go for you in general? She goes, yes. So I lay out the change genie card and I play it with her and then... That was it. After that, I made a real deck of it because I knew it was a great tool. Hey, this is Amber here. She's here. Hi, Amber. Okay, so that we're going to play Change Genie. And mm -hmm. I think, Sunny, do you want to, uh, or Sun Kagami, as some of you know her, Sun Kagami. Mm -hmm. her new I'm going to share my screen. Old name. Yeah, and she's, it's my Dharma name. That's right. She's going to share, um, are you going to share the mural board? So yeah. See that. Yeah, let's see yeah. the mural board because you'll see everything in there, which will be super fun. Yeah, we set it up also to Steven Anderson. He and I are both lovers of card games and card yeah. decks. So uh, you can gamify quite a few games using card decks inside a mural, yes, which is because yeah. you can digitize the deck. So I'm going to share the Change Genie screen. All right, here we go. I know. I know. And, and um, so, Sunny, do you want to do it on how the whole show will go as a, as a season, the first season? Yeah, I was thinking, um, that's a great question. Thank you for asking. I was thinking that I would do it. I, was, I want to talk about collaboration design and the unfolding possibility of that and how impactful it can be relative okay. to my chaplaincy training too because those are like sort of parallel processes so what do you think well uh, you want to do it uh so do you want to see how it will impact you how this whole process how your work with the inner collaboration which is mm -hmm. what you're doing in the chaplaincy program right right how will it affect your um, ability to collaborate? Is it about you or is it about the whole process of getting all of the collaborators that are viewing us right now involved? Is it part of how? Oh yeah, let's let's do let's do it where it's a uh, how the field intertwingles with me, the team at Mural, and the community and the other practitioners. That's a great idea. Yeah, how will we build collaborative intelligence as a community so that we can all kaboom our brains? Right. Yes, because you're going to be my one of my chief kaboomers. You know what I'm saying? Hey, that's right. Huh? So Great. hey, my computer, my computer freaked out again. So I'm going to go sit at Amber's desk. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah. Put Amber on the screen. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to show you one of my favorite tools because I think. She's done a great job so far, you know, getting everything going. So let's just wave the genie wand over the computer screen so that we can get into mural really easily because. Gosh, I hope it's not me having to do it on my end, but I could be. It could be. I got it. I got a link to Mural too. And um, and so how's it going so far? Everybody put something in the chat and then we'll put it up on the screen. Yeah. Oh, I love your wands. Okay. All right. You're not. 
Are you ready? Yes. Okay, cool. I'm going to share my screen. There is, you can see them in the background. This is behind the scenes. Sort of, if you can imagine that this is sort of like a reality TV show that we're doing, um, but it's live. There we go. All right. We got you. Now get your other screen off. Get her out of here. Bye-bye. Do you know how to do that? Oh, I think someone on that end. There. Excellent. Okay, good. Okay, but you're muted, so unmute yourself at the bottom. Unmute at the bottom. And here's, where is my mirror? Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm going to share this. Now, you're going to share the mural screen. Everybody I know, big drum roll. Holy crap. I have no, okay. Thanks. There we go. <laughs> well, I love that you're saying there we go. It's very confident of you. It is. I am literally on a whole other system. Oh, wow. Super fun. I know. I that. You're doing good, though. How do I, Amber, how do I share my mural? Where <laughs> she comes. You do it. Yeah. That. <laughs> that one. There you go. Yeah, Mitchell. I wonder why that's Sweet. happening. Oh my gosh. There we okay, go. Okay, super dope. All right. So for those of you that are like, Thanks. I don't know if I can see this, I would suggest right I'm gonna zoom in. Use two fingers to zoom in, or she'll zoom in for us with mural. So here's oh, a example of a mural board. If you haven't used mural before, it's really fantastic technology to use online. You could mm -hmm. see and they put the link in there, or Amber put it in for me, maybe, so I could see it because maybe I should have it up just in case we need it. But if yeah, I, do, I don't know, I think it's okay if you don't. Can't see you guys. There yeah. we go. I put it up there just in case. Hey, I'm picking my deck of cards. All right. Yeah, I'm vibing. I'm feeling the vibe okay, of each so card. What happens is that first you lay out the cards, the change game, right? Start early on, uh, halfway, uh, mm -hmm. almost there, finish, looking back. But what she hasn't done is picked her weather cards yet. So we like mm -hmm. to do that too. So be okay. sure to grab, you grab three of the nine, it, just random. She's going to grab three of the nine and put them up above. Um, mm -hmm. so this is how you do the Change Genie um, process. Yeah. You pick the three randomly, and then you okay. choose randomly from the deck, and you keep the Change Genie side of the card up. Mm -hmm. And then you move them around because she wants to get them into good locations. And then she's yeah. going to deal a visual card to each one of those. The visual cards are the ones that have the genie that say underneath on them okay. on the right. So she's going to okay. grab three of those to put mm -hmm. them underneath. Now, um, uh, you can do it one at a time. But for speed's sake, she's doing three at a time just to make it easier for all of us so that we don't Yeah, because y'all already had to tolerate my goofery. That's right. So now... Now, just to set it up, and I do okay. this, I say with the client, okay, so this is what we're doing now is now we're going to look at what you, what's going to happen in the mm -hmm. community, the collaborative intelligence community, when we start mm -hmm. this whole process mm -hmm. from today. So what's happening at the start? Let's see what you okay. get. So okay, turn so I get to turn over this one? Card. Turn over that okay. card. Okay. Ooh, okay. Okay. We're add. gonna add color. Well, <laughs> yeah, we certainly did. We added a lot of color. That's hilarious. That's awesome. <laughs> What's that mean to you? Just give it interpretation. What's add color mean? Okay. Well, I think diversity and neurodiversity is kind of an obvious um, addition, <laughs> right? But also, I think it. Ho I the way I want it. I want it to go is that we are welcoming and encompassing of like a whole host of methods, different methodologies and practices. That's right. Okay, good. So early on in the process, maybe you know a few months down the road, what's going to yeah. happen for okay. us, in our community? Mm hmm. Okay, you ready? You're ready. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna. No doubt. Who I just had to ask her up a lot. Today, right? but, yeah. I know. Thank you for leaning in, Patty. That was so dope. And Amber, shout out. Thank you. So yeah, I'm going to ask for help. Yeah. So, okay. So Patty, what that means to me is that I'm not going to try to tackle all of the things by myself. I have a team now of outstanding people. So I'm going to ask for help when I need it and encourage them to do the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then when we're over halfway there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's see what we got. Oh, <gasps> all right. We got a magic potion. All right. So what's, what's the magic potion going to be? Oh, my God. Okay. Such a good card. Oh, okay. Okay. So there's this 
force of good called bodhicitta, which basically means that you have benevolent well-wishing for the Oh, sen- for, for all sentient beings that they be ha- happy and wholesome and well so i want that to be the magic gold potion that infuses what we do oh, i love it strong bodhicitta i'm just drawing well wishing which is like all these beautiful hearts coming out and all these things coming out all right good what yeah. else and all right so when we're almost there what's mm-hmm. the community get, going to experience what are we going to experience in the community Okay, when we're almost there, and like whatever there even means, um, oh, we're gonna make a plan. So, uh, oh, I feel like we should make yeah. a plan oh, at the yes. beginning. <laughs> oh, <yes. laughs> uh, hey, Patty, you know what I heard yesterday? Somebody said, uh, great facilitators often have they have they come with two things a plan and a trash can because <laughs> you just throw that thing in the trash whenever you're in real life. At, or as Mike Tyson says, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. So exactly. Mm-hmm. So, so make a plan. All right. So when we're almost there, we're going to make a plan. And then at the finish, when yeah. whatever the finish is, like, do you think there will ever be a finish? What's mm-hmm. the finish? What are we going to find at the finish? Oh, team. Oh, oh boom. boom. That's like so fantastic. It's all so right. good. So, uh, I just want to say that for Mm. those of you that are watching this, we didn't set these cards up. This is random. Mm. She's just pulling these and placing them. And so I think this is the magic of the card, the visual card deck. Like we could interpret this any way we want, right? Right. The point is to let the other person interpret it for you so Mm -hmm. that you don't interpret for them, but you can add things like Mm -hmm. team up. That means that you're going to find more collaboration, collaborators in the field. What's that mean to you? Mm-hmm. at the finish yeah. Yeah. oh that team up it, I think it means that there's a real solidarity because for me when the collaboration design institute is taking form we are in fact becoming a team we're becoming that we that human pyramid so yes. for me it means that that not only have we taken care of each other throughout the process but we've actually inspired and motivated other people to team up right like radical, uh, yeah. radical teaming Yes. yes, I love that. And I want to say to people, she said that pyramid of people, we didn't see that slide. It never showed oh. on the screen, but she had this beautiful mm-hmm. slide of all these people doing a human pyramid. It was like 20 people high, wasn't it? It so was eight it, stories. It's don't eight show stories. it though, because you know. <laughs> we, can't, <laughs> we can't be confident at this all right. time. So now let's look at after it's over and looking back. All right. Okay. What we discover or we okay. reflect upon it clarify okay interesting right. after it's clarify. over clarify huh what do you is that a retrospective oh um, retrospect it's retrospect. i'm thinking of steve schofield and our love for retrospectives uh okay clarify i think it means like keep being innovative right so go in yeah. and check and check it out and go back and unpack what happened and then keep amplifying and getting more and more yeah. interesting about our methodology and um, our adaptation. Oh, yeah, I love that. That's my interpretation. That's how I feel about it. I love that. That's fantastic. Okay, now we got to go Very on nice. the weather. Okay. Now we'll go the weather. So okay. above, we've got three weather cards. And you always, you look at the first weather card first, right? So uh-huh. the cloud, we want to see what kind of weather could we possibly meet okay. in this process. So let's see what the weather is. Oops, I deleted them both. It might be upside down, too. I, I think mean. it's just grouped. Okay, ready? Mm-hmm. Oh. Okay, so deus ex machina. You know, when you write a play and mm-hmm. you don't know how to end it because you've written yourself into a corner, so to speak, then an oh. act of God comes in to sweep over. It's like something magical happens at the end. Oh, I love it. So it's an magic. act of uh, ex machina. It that must be of the machine, something. Mm-hmm. Uh, so God, it means God in the machine. Yeah, God um, in the machine. God in the machine. And so then out of the blue happens. What is what's gonna happen out of the blue? Let's see what Change Genie tells us. Okay. So turn the, the turn the change genie card and let's see what she says. Oh yeah, thanks. Okay. Says. There we go. Okay, wait, ready? Buckle down. Buckle down. Out of the Whoa. blue. We're gonna have to buckle down. Okay, we'll have to buckle down. Isn't that an interesting combination? Yes, I I never would think those two would go together. I know. 
blue. Out of the blue, you'd have to buckle down. A god in the machine. Maybe, maybe the momentum is so great and fantastic that we yep. have to buckle our seat belts because we're on yes. the mothership rocket flying. Ship. Yeah, we're on the rocket ship. Rocket so <laughs> buckle down. Buckle yes. down. Thing I think is, you know, buckle down is about discipline, which is what you're talking about. Buckle down because it's going to be so amazing. So amazing. You're really going to have to get all the systems in place and the way yes. you material and the way that people can access the boards that maybe we create for I them. love it. That's so good. And thank God I have people on my team that are really oh, good at systematizing. God. You amazing people. <laughs> I know. I'm so really fortunate. Do. You do. Okay. Right, that's let's so what helpful. Other what other weather okay. we going to encounter? Okay. Ready? I'm ready. Envision oh, the best. No. Tell us the weather first. Oops. Okay. Oops. <laughs> Oops. Okay. I'm going to undo. Okay. Ready? I did. I undid it. That's what's so great about digital environments. Okay. Oh. Missing leader. Oh. Okay. Good. Patty. All right. And so then <laughs> I'm like, Patty, are you going to be my Obi-Wan? <laughs> missing leader. And then the change genie says, how are okay. you? Well, the missing leader we're going to envision, envision the, best. the best that's right that's right oh man see this one always makes me think are we lost our leader and we have to go find them in like a bunker and then save them but i'm <laughs> like that's not what it means well no sometimes i think that you know the leader changes and that yeah. I often, you know i remember that very first reading i did with those mm -hmm. three by five cards that was one of the things that showed up and everybody in the room because there was the leader and there were all these other people in mm -hmm. the in the organization, the leader above that leader I was working with had was mm -hmm. gone. So they all mm -hmm. went, oh, like mm -hmm. that. That's the did way. they did they rise to their own sense of they leadership? Did. They rose. Okay. They stepped up. They stepped Got up. It. All right, now Beautiful. turn the cloud first. There okay, thank you. Okay, it's hard. Yeah. We get impatient. We want to see the answer, right? I know. What's like the big reveal is really exciting. Okay, yeah. sidebar. Big bar. All right. <laughs> I have a sidebar. <laughs> I've never it. got this one. We're gonna have a sidebar. So <laughs> are we gonna? Uh, have in I the guess we're all gonna get super loopy at some point, <laughs> and then we're gonna go missing. <laughs> <in the> <laughs> That's no doubt. Uh, all right. So okay. what okay. did Jane say about the sidebar? Okay. Exaggerate the sidebar. A sidebar is to ex is exaggerate. Oh, okay. This is how. I okay, I got it. I like it. Okay, I got it. I got it. So you know how a lot of innovations come from like sort of incubations with really creative, nimble groups of people outside of the bigger enterprise? Yes. Um, I want to say that there's something interesting that will come from a collaboration with a, a, a really nimble team that surprises us and it's going to exaggerate and amplify our efforts. That's how I feel. Oh, I love it. Bam. That's good. I love it. Now pull out for a bigger view. And okay. Then screenshot of it so we okay can, we can give them a copy of this too and we can all hold the space to see how Aww. this holds right so yes. this, this is kind of our accountability page now right i'm going to take a screenshot yeah. myself because i want to see that um okay. i think uh and so that's what you do with your client mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. in this case we did it with the collaborative intelligence the whole process in the community but mm -hmm. you can do it with yourself you can do it with a client you can do mm -hmm. it the team mm -hmm. uh you know i did something around education in the state of california and at the end the leaders who were working on it i said hey do you want to do change genie and they were like yeah and then mm -hmm. at the end, they were so even more bonded than they were through the experience of course working on strategy you know yeah. mm -hmm. now we're talking in the meta we're talking in the metaphor we're looking at the metaphor to tell mm -hmm. us and, and as Sunny said earlier, you always speak to the metaphor from your perspective. Mm -hmm. So when somebody tells you a story, you don't feel the story from their perspective. You feel it from yours, mm -hmm. which is so powerful. And it's the same with Change Genie. Everybody will have a different interpretation. And mm -hmm. I love that part. Well, and you know what I, I else I'm seeing about this game is that it obviously it opens up really rich conversations and we can expand it or collapse it as much as we want. But uh, we're being aware of time, but it has these spinoff game activities that would result from it. So when the one that says, like, make a plan, it's like, OK, so what does that look like for you? Then I could go do a subgroup or I could do some kind of uh, follow up activity that has to do with scenario planning. You yes. Know? 
or red teaming or future you know. casting or back casting exactly to get exactly, exactly where you want to go well yeah. i'm curious too so we've got this change genie reading and i put a few of the things in the future that that we're talking about unpacking right and well wishing mm -hmm. and team up i got to put the other team members here but what mm -hmm. when you when you think about the future for this what what would you love to see happen and i'll just add a few more things here Hey, Amber, will you respond to questions from T in the chat? Thank you. And I would I would ask if, if we have a chat, um, if the chat is running, can you see anything that our community would add to it that they would love to see in the future of collaborative intelligence? Because I think that might be very interesting. Mm -hmm. Might be very interesting. So there's comments. Let's see what they say. Yeah. See, anybody got something we can add to the future? Ooh, the seniors. So Antonio said the seniors, meaning like we need a collective genius. I'm just riffing on something that Antonio said. Um, did that respond to your question appropriately? I was tracking the comments. Yes. Thank you, Antonio. Collective yeah. genius. Uh -huh. Anything else? Anything else? Mm -hmm. that you see there that they want to see so yeah. practices around yeah practices around radical candor uh, or, yeah. and brave conversations mm -hmm. uh, and I'm, I'm gonna kind of improv on one about having a loosely held plan so peep so in other words being comfortable with improvisation in the moment I think that our perfect, our inner perfectionists really have a need to control outcomes. So I think on this show, we can practice the, the beauty of improvisation and resilience around um, missteps. Yeah, I think that's fantastic. Well, I think um, I, I love this. I love that we did change Genie and I love that we got some feedback from people too. Yeah. What, what else did you want to talk about before we, we've got well, like- I want Haley. So I want to make sure we stay true to what your agenda is. Yeah, thank you. So I want actually to bring Haley in. And I did notice there's people in the in the comments requesting the mural. We do have a template that we can share with you guys. And so what's so awesome is that Haley Temple. So remember I mentioned I have co-hosts mm -hmm. and I have so I have Jim Callback, the chief evangelizer of mural, Mark Tippin, the director of strategic next initiatives. I think he's going to get a new title. And then Haley Temple, who is um, really a game stormer extraordinaire and a collaboration designer. And she's going to pop in. I don't know. Um, Amber, do you know where Haley is? Oh. What? I think I see her, but I can't. Yeah, there she is. Okay, cool. So we can add her to the stream. There we go. Hi, Haley. Hi. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hey. Sorry. <laughs> I just got excessively excited. My bad. <laughs> I know. Me too. I'm like, ah! Look at this, you guys. By the me way, too. you guys have been, like, I was saying, absolute just queens <laughs> and, like, master class in improvisation and, like, <laughs> rolling with the punches. So. I know. I cannot believe that never happens. What happened has never happened. And I was like, of course that happened today. No, it happens. It's like, I think Brian Tarallo is a friend who's like, you have to enter your sessions with a state of wonder. Like, I wonder what's going to go wrong today. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Brian is the master of puns and visual thinking. Yeah. He's amazing. And by the way, mm -hmm. so I didn't realize you and I have like the same chip in our tooth. Oh, look at that. Uh, oh. a, mine's a little baby. I have that on the other side to like fill it out. Is yours natural or did you actually like run into something? My sister hit me in the face with a basketball when I was oh little. oh and you uh, uh, my friend hit me with a beer bottle that's why this happened I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, mine, mine did too oh really we have some <laughs> great friends <laughs> that's awesome that's hey. amazing yeah do you want to tell people about how to participate in your change genie workshop yeah. and also about yourself Haley a little bit about yourself. Sure. Hi, everyone. Yeah, my name is Haley Temple, and I am a 
collaboration designer. I am a professional actor and I am a storyteller like so many of you. So I feel like I'm just with my people today. And there were a few of you guys in the audience who were saying, you know, I want to get practice. I want to be able to play this game and of course build confidence before I bring it to my team or my clients or just use it myself. And so we wanted to offer you guys space to do that because all of us here are big believers in do learning by doing. And mm -hmm. so if I guess I can drop this into the chat, the chat and stream. Yard. Yeah. Let me see if I can do that. But I want to invite all of you to a workshop. I will be hosting this Friday at the same time as this session is, and it will be an hour for us to practice and play and um, reflect in that way. All of us are starting to, yeah, have that confidence and ability to use this game in an online space. And, mm -hmm. you know, something else, and I'll add, I'm trying to add the event, put it into our private chat. Mm -hmm. I'll put it on my LinkedIn page too. While oh, you're, while and I'll yeah. also, Okay, I see how I can do it. Um, okay, cool. So you can register there. I also have another event because I, I was going to do one and then I was like, okay, this is actually way too fun. Um, we're going to have multiple events focused on online play. And mm -hmm. one of them also is going to be talking about digitizing card games. So yes, yeah. yeah. So this is something that is really exciting to, and especially to a lot of people of you guys here, is how do I make my um, games accessible online? And so I'm going to add a link for another event where we're going to, and this is not going to be me being like, this is how you make a card game online. This is going to be like, we all come into the space and we say, Hey, how do you digitize a card game? And what's a diff? How do you make it similar to doing it in person or analog? How do you make it different? And how do you celebrate those differences? So, please join my events and play. And um, you know, we definitely want to hear and get you guys involved in participating. Yeah, if you can. So yeah, if another topic you guys want. If there's another online session we can host for you, um, totally. let us know. Yeah, and I think I want to just echo that sentiment because because we I didn't get to show you all those slides that actually have tools for inner collaboration and outer collaboration, but we are going to mobilize a whole host of different strategies and methodologies that involve the external work and the internal work and, because it all ultimately is a, a matchup and an integration. And Patty, I see you smiling because you like that stuff too. And so, but we, it, this is a collective effort. And so we absolutely invite uh, desires, longings, aspirations, preferred techniques. I see Allie Marshall put one in here around um, color zones of regulation. Fantastic, Allie. We'll share that on LinkedIn later. Related to the red, blue, and green zones. So this is a, consider it a genius, the collective genius of all of us making our way forward together. Patty, were you going to say something? I was just going to say, so you want to, I think what's amazing about it is, I don't know if you don't know Haley, she's incredible. So just, oh, yeah. I just Bam. want to say that. Um, mm -hmm. She can't even help it. It's you just... want to, she's going to go and get a deck of change genie cards. You got to do that first and then yeah. sign up for the workshop and you can get those at up your creative genius backslash shop. Mm -hmm. Right. There. And then there are $25 for that. Mm -hmm. um, deck, And then that will give you access um, to the, to the template and yeah. Net. So you get That's not right. just the tangible deck, which will get delivered to your house, but mm -hmm. you'll get the, the template so you can use it online with people as well as in mm -hmm. person. Haley's going to walk you through both. And so, um, and I'll probably pop in there too, just make sure if there's any questions and like that. Perfect. Yeah, that's smart. And if yeah. it's slow in the shop, just know we migrated our website this week. So you know how it is. It's all about <laughs> everything it happens. Patty, to me. By the way, like the website's beautiful. Oh, uh -huh. all right. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I want to say thank you all for tolerating this um, yeah. joyful raucous of, of craziness that hopefully you gleaned some useful pieces from it. And we learned a lot and that's actually what we do here. We experiment and we test and we are resilient and we come back and we say, this is what we learned. So it's okay that it went that way and actually kind of useful. So um, I'm so grateful for y'all. Have a really good Wednesday. 
and I'll see you on LinkedIn. And uh, I want all of us to be collaboration designers. Yeah, let's do it. We'll take a picture of this and put it in Ooh. LinkedIn. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Everybody have yeah. a good day. See yeah, thanks. Soon. Thank you, Patty and Haley. <laughs> thank you, thanks, Amber. Thanks. <laughs> thank you. Thanks. Thanks to my alter ego over there. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Bye. See you later. Bye. Oh, Adam Butler. What's up, Adam Butler? See you later. Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody. And I'll post the links to the events on my Thank event you, Tanya. Well. Mm -hmm.